Hey guys, it's Vince. Hopefully you're having a great day. If you hear any background noise, that's because I own a gym. Imagine that. Um, so today I want to talk about um, and unpack an email that I wrote. The subject line of the email was the bigger threat than the Delta strand for gyms. And uh, I got a lot of um, feedback from it, some good, some bad. Uh, and I and I opened the, the email with a disclaimer that said, due to the harsh reality of this email, uh, continuing forward is not for everyone, especially you optimists out there. For those that courageously read on, there's a free gift at the end. So the same applies for you because I just read you the disclaimer. Um, so there's been a lot of talk. Uh, I, I even got one the other day. You know, the subject of or the title of the article is, you know, brick and mortar gyms, dying deaths to Peloton and all this other, you know, hogwash. And it's, it's funny that like, you know, these journalists will do anything, uh, to, to get their articles read and they have absolutely no idea, um, what they're talking about and comparing, um, brick and mortar gyms to blockbuster video is just one of the dumbest things, um, I've heard in a really long time. But that being said, um, I'm not going to be this optimist and bury my head in the sand and not act like it's not going that, – that it's not harder to run a gym right now, that the pocket of people that brick-and-mortar gyms have to draw from – is smaller today than it once was and probably will stay the same um, in terms of shrinking due to people staying with uh, some of the things that I'm about to um, to talk about. So I'm not going to bring you a lot of good news in the beginning, right? I'm going to kind of just talk about some bad stuff that is probably why people are saying things like brick-and-mortar uh, gyms are dead. Now, I don't think if you're listening to this, I don't think that that's the case. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there, there is some difficult waters that we have to navigate through. So uh, here's the first, you know, obvious one, right? So, you know, I learned this from my neighborhood where, you know, I moved into my neighborhood. And one of the first things I walked by was four women uh, standing, you know, in the neighborhood walking their dogs, all talking about the Peloton workout uh, they, that they just did, right? And that's what, that was the topic of their conversation. They stood there for a really, really long time and just talked about their workouts and talked about how much they loved it and talked about how engaged they were and talked about their instructors and how good looking they were, right? It's just like, they just love it. They really, and, and again, this is, you know, several months ago, um, I happen to believe a couple of those bikes have possibly turned into clothes hangers, um, but I could be wrong. Um, I, I do believe that there are lifers on Peloton. I believe there's lifers on Mirror. I believe people that used to come to our gyms will do Peloton forever, um, but that does not mean that that is everybody. Um, so that's the first kind of thing is, and, and I, I'm not telling anything you don't know, but it is a real threat. Don't kind of bury your head in the sand. It's like, Oh no, Peloton can't compare. No, no, they are, um, they, 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 they shrink our market, right? They shrink our market because there are a population of people that can, um, do it at home. Okay. Um, here's the second thing. The second thing is you will have competition in the brick and mortar space, right? But here's where gym owners make the mistake. They make the mistake of thinking that the, their only competition is the gym that looks just like yours, right? Like, so you do small group training and you're in a boutique two to 3,000 square foot studio. And you think that your only competition is, you know, your, you know, you know, rival from high school that opened a gym, you know, one town over and you guys are battling for the same people and you both run small group training. And you both have, you know, you both got all your equipment from before and better and you both got mind body and they but like it looks identical, right? A lot of times we think that's our only competition and that's not true. Um, the competition that we have in the brick and mortar space 
is all other brick and mortars that are trying to get the same people that we're getting, right? So you have Pure Bar, you have yoga gyms, you have the big box gyms. All of those people, you could argue for your athlete populations, for those of you that train athletes, you could argue that batting cages, you know, are uh, uh, – a, um, a, a competitor as well. And I remember Mike Boyle saying this years ago, it's like everyone's competing for the athletic dollar, right? There's all kinds of things, you know, going on. So you, you have these different th- brick and mortar type places. Now, here's an example where, yeah, you probably are saying, well, I have clients that do both. Well, let's, you know, do some math. Like let's, your client can only train so much. They only have so many hours in the day to work out unless they're like, you know, a total, you know, um, you know, it, it, they have all, all the money in the world and all the time in the world. There's not many people, not a ton of people out there like that. So think of it like this. Like, let's say, you know, they come to you twice a week and then they do yoga once a week. Right. Well, you know what that means is that means you, they're not coming to you three days a week. And they probably should be coming to you three days a week, but they're not because the other day they're going to yoga. Now, if everybody does that and you're charging equally, I don't know what your price points are, right? And let's say you're charging equally. Um, Let's say I'm just going to use an example that you charge 50 bucks a session. Well, instead of uh, $150 a week, they're paying you $100 a week. Well, in my, my, my bad math uh, tells me that that's a third of your business, right? So your competition in this day and age is not just the CrossFit gym down the street. It's not just the other small group training gym. It's anyone that is looking Um, you know, for your client. Now, that's not to say that there can't be synergies and there can't be joint ventures and and other things like that. But just you got to know that 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 these things um, are, 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 you know, shrinking the market for you. They're shrinking the, the pool of people. Right. And so here's the next one. The next one is um, people moving. And, you know, I know in my area, there are people like getting out of Dodge, they're moving down to the beach, they're moving down to North Carolina, they're going to Florida, they don't want to pay the big New Jersey taxes and pay, you know, all kinds of uh, crazy fees and, and stuff like that. So they're, they're, they're in my area, they're getting out of here. Right. Um, you may not live in an area like that, but that is a real case. I mean, think about some businesses that have been, you know, in business for a long time. People don't stay in that area forever. And if you're in business long enough, there is a, a, a percentage of people that you will lose um, to just moving out of the area and not even just. You know, maybe they don't even move out of the state, but maybe they just move out of within that 15 minute magic drive time. Maybe they move an hour away in the same state. Right. But that's a reality. And that's a real part of, the, um, you know, attrition um, for, for, for that matter. Um, the, the last thing is the most in, in control, but that's people just needing a change. There, there are some people that really like just, Hey, I'm bored. I need some variety. I am like, I go, I need a new building to walk into. Um, there are people like that. There are a, a certain population of people that just need things to be different and you'll lose those people. And there's no amount of client retention work and other things like that. And I know we want to push it, um, and, and try and do the best we can with uh, tracking attendance, with offering value about sleep and nutrition and stuff like that. But the reality, and you should, you should, I'm not saying not to do that. You should be doing that. But the reality is some of those people are going are gone anyway. Okay, so now that I just completely depressed you, um, and really what I just gave you is a, 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 a brutal, honest truth of market saturation, Right? You have the market shrinking from at-home stuff. You have the market um, shrinking uh, due to your competition in brick and mortar in your area. You have your market shrinking due to people moving. You have your market shrinking due to people just needing a, a change. And that's, that's just like bigger factors. There's other factors of, you know, does someone get um, injured or does someone, you know, just go through personal problems and they got to quit. So the reality is, Playing a volume game these days is really, really hard. Now, here's a way I can explain this to you, okay? 
there's some gyms that I know that are like some of the top in the country. They're really good. They're owned by celebrity style owners, big speakers, people like that. And I know for a fact that they don't have over 300 clients, right? That they got, you know, between 200 and 300 clients. And they've been in business for some of them a long time. Some of them longer than me, right? I've been in business 13 years. Some of them longer than me, right? If most of these people are marketing savvy people, right? They, they know what they're doing in business. They know what they're doing in marketing. Um, why wouldn't, if they started 15, 16 years ago, why wouldn't they have 600 clients, right? If they, even if they just grew, if they had 200 clients in 2010, or why, didn't, why don't they have 300 clients, right? And the reason why they don't is because of this phenomenon that I'm talking about today, that at some point, you're not going to get a thousand members in your gym. And especially with what's going on in this day and age, it's getting harder and harder and harder to grow a large volume of clients. And if you know that you're not going to be able to grow and get to the four, five, six hundred um, client gym, like there's some, then there are some, I actually have one in my mastermind, two in my mastermind that both have 700 members, but they defy the odds. These are, um, unicorn, you know, style people that also have a really good marketing machine that I help them with, um, to, to have that. But the majority of us, right. After a while, after in business, we're kind of just churning and churning and churning. And all of a sudden it's like, you're spinning your wheels, right? Well, Now, we don't want to just spin our wheels, but we want to continue to grow. And if we can't grow in the number of people, if we can't go from 150 clients to 300 clients or 200 clients to 400 clients, right, um, then we got to grow another way. And that's the concept I've been teaching since the very start of this pandemic, and that's more from less. The business that is going to win these days is the one that constantly thinks about how do I get more from less? How do I have a really good business that pays me a lot of money with 150 clients? How do I leverage my knowledge base of what I know about what other people want to be able to make more money from the people that I've got? Here, here, here's a question for you, and I propose this question to my mastermind. You got 150 people that are paying you, you know, whatever, a month, right? Wouldn't it be cool to come up with something that you could sell them that they would pay you another monthly fee for and it became part of their life so much that if you turned it off, there would be extreme pain in their life. It's called pain of disconnect. Right now, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but man, you got 150 members on a gym membership. And then if you can find something to sell to the other, uh, sell them another thing to those 150 people, you just created a mini business within a business. Right now, I'm not here to tell you today. That's a bigger concept. It's something, you know, I'm kind of working on in the, uh, in the back office here, in my little lab. Right. But the reality is trying to play a volume game, especially in these days, is going to be hard. So you've got to focus on the concept of more from less. Now, some of you are um, not able to play this game because of your model. Right. Some of your, you know, when you're playing the one on one game, it's going to be hard. Right. Um, some of you are, you know, playing this um, game with large group. Right. And you got like, you know, a large group. And and the problem is with this stuff is you're not charging enough money to be able to warrant the amount of money you want to make. And that's what causes you. So the more from less concept, the first thing, if you're really going to buy into this concept is you got to make sure that you're making the money you need to make for each client. So some of you need to really look seriously at your pricing. You need to look seriously at how much money you're charging right now. And is that amount of money able 
to get you to grow, even if you don't grow in terms of a volume, even if you don't grow with that many people. Right now, I'm not saying you should just stop marketing. You, you have to market because at the end of the day, I just talked to you about all the people that you're going to lose, right? And, and a hundred person, if you do a damn good job, a hundred client gym is going to lose three clients a month at a 3% attrition. That's if you're doing a good job. So you have to keep marketing and getting more people in the door just to reload. But um, exceeding all of that is gets more difficult. And instead of banging your head against the wall trying to play a volume game, you got to make sure that your business is priced the right way. And the second thing is you got to make sure that your model is profitable enough. And what I mean in the profitable model is you got to make sure that you're making a max amount of money per hour. So, you know, the comparison is the one-on-one versus small group. And obviously, yeah, you, you need less people in, in to do one-on-one training. But there's a cap on how much money you're going to be able uh, to, to charge versus you ran a small group model. If you charge 100 bucks for one-on-one, you could charge 50 bucks for small group and make 300 bucks per hour. So there's, there's more from less again, right? You're making uh, more profit from less sessions. Um, when you look at more from less in terms of your pricing, you're, you know, hopefully you can raise your prices and you're making um, more money with um, less clients. So, so, so the concept is more of a thinking process. It's really um, a, a mindset that you got to adopt uh, going forward. Again, I'm not saying that there aren't high volume gyms that are doing well right now, but for the most of us, um, man, the, the, these markets are shrinking and um, getting saturated and it's getting tougher and tougher. But the reality is what we have to do is just maybe change the way we're running our businesses, change the way we think about business um, and not bury our head in the sand and just say, oh, Peloton doesn't, you know, Peloton isn't going to, you know, beat us out. No, it's it's not, but it definitely is going to affect us. Uh, so, so it's important to be paying attention to all this stuff. It's important to be uh, educating yourselves um, on the, those types of things, uh, what's going on in, in, the, in the fitness industry outside of your you know, brick and mortar space. And all that stuff matters. What Apple's doing matters. What Amazon's doing matters. What all these things do matter. And you just got to be well-versed and pay attention to it. So uh, hopefully I didn't uh, depress you uh, too much today, but uh, that, 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 that's some insight for you. So start thinking uh, more from less. And uh, hopefully this was uh, really helpful for you. Peace.